as sexy as this. Really <laughs> this is really out of control. <laughs> this is really good. You want to try it? I'm not even high. Can you imagine if I smoked? Oh, you got to do that. Hmm? You sit like a, a real cameraman. Hmm? He sits like a cameraman. <laughs> That's how they sit. <laughs> like the way he was leaned there was like, it was perfect. It's really good, ain't it? It's dry as a motherfucker. <laughs> Shit. I'm not bad. All right, I'm done. What the fuck? Okay. Right. Mm. I should probably pour my wine. Oh. Baby, ain't nobody got time for that shit. Oh drink and smoke. God. We gonna drink a little. Smoke a little. Drink a little. Smoke she a up little. To something, man. Mm-hmm. Smoke a baby. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you, listen. <laughs> you're really up to something and you're gonna blame it on me anyway. <laughs> you got the gun. I got the gun. So you said. I got the gun. Mm-hmm. That's why when guys be like, she trapped me. I'm like, nigga, shut the fuck up. Nigga. What are you talking about? Nigga, you got the fucking gun. Are we recording? Okay, I'm sorry. We're going to start now. Start. Okay. This is going to be new, so I'm going to try to really like get this together. And don't be having your phone going off because... Always going off. Can you put on Do Not Disturb? I got it. It'll, it'll still come in. Put my do not disturb. It That's was all I gotta do. That's it. So what if I make a mistake and do that and you and I can't see your phone? Try it. Okay. Okay. I said by mistake. Okay, that mistake can cost you a lot. Oh. Okay, you ready? This girl right here, bro. Ah, uh, wax. What you talking about now? I can't believe this all shit. Dope. Even the bass is like boom, boom, boom. That's us, and I purchased the license. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of. Sh- I'm about to say shit. I'm thirty. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever she says with Yo. me, your host Carla. Yo, it's your boy Wax. What's going on with y'all? Hey, I'm glad that you're back for another week of podcast that's exactly how the podcast starts too <laughs> with the lighter <laughs> you calling me too I'm like what the fuck <laughs> what do you, you want what? down and anyway, we are back wax was trying to get sexy for the recording today he put a v-neck on he had his chest showing yo i didn't even know i put the shirt on to shock me like what the fuck i could get sexy <laughs> Yo, it's, it really is really different. It's like, oh, you can put that on and change your whole appearance. It changes your whole appearance. You look so different. With I, a I didn't even fucking know you could actually do that. So if I put like really the like the Versace and all that type of shit the on. Who? The who? The, the, the Versace. And the, <laughs> Versace. All that type of shit. <laughs> if I start putting that type of shit on, you telling me that I could be sexy? You could know. be sexy. <laughs> you get real, real sexy. You think motherfuckers trying to holler at me now, baby? She'll get real. I don't know. They're going to die. Anyway, before we get started, I want to let you guys know, ladies, again, make sure to go fill out the survey for Innovate Her Now if you want to win a ticket to L.A. and a free ticket to the summit as well as All Women's Podcasting Career Summit uh, Wellness as well with the girls from Good Moms, Bad Choices, our producer May and myself and a bunch of different guests that are coming to L.A. in March. So go ahead and get to the vi- the bio. Do It's like a five-minute survey, if yeah. that. A bunch of questions. It gets It's amazing what we're going to be able to do. And tickets go on sale next month. So Love right now, that. if you want to win the tickets, go do the survey. And it helps okay. us out. I, I, I feel like I, I need to do something for this. You know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate this. is kind of For good. us? Hell yeah. So you want to sponsor with the gummies? I definitely do that. And I'm also going to sp- um, ship a couple of my uh, security guards there with y'all. Oh, no, no, no. We're okay. No, 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 no. No, we I got this. Y'all. My security guards will be there. We don't, we don't, we don't need any of this. I'm sending my guys. So okay. It's a ladies only event. That. So my security guards, my guys. You better find some girls at security. Mm, I actually got them. They like that. <laughs> don't send them girls. I want to go in there and eat all the girls. I got you. Jada no. coming through. <laughs> Jada can't come. She going she to be nasty with all the girls. Hey, <laughs> I don't do nothing. This she week, secure their body. Whatever. This week, we're going to, um, instead of doing an Apple review, I want to talk about, you know, what you guys are sta- saying out there in the social media streets. We put out a clip from last week's episode. Okay. And it did really well because we were talking, well, one of them was when we did a reenactment of 
if he were to cheat and how men should probably practice because they're terrible know. at this. <laughs> he was so bad. But um, the, this guy's name, I'm going to say your name, but it's at Dick underscore Swanson. Good job. People's names are wild out here. Definitely came from your side. Not mm. my people. That show people. <laughs> but he said, he comments under and said, one time my girl found a condom wrapper on the bed nice. and asked if I was with some girl. I said I jerked off with it because I was bored and fell asleep. My guy. <laughs> See how good that is? Like, he's good. I need you to come work for me, got my guy. No. Whoever you are, jump in my DMs, tell me who you are because you're quick on your feet. Mm-mm. The cops be like, yo, whose is that? You got something quick to go ahead and say. You know he what I'm jerked off and was bored with a condom. Then he talking about hashtag baby I was bored. Hashtag I'm sorry. Hashtag I miss us. Hashtag call me when you see this. Oh, <laughs> so that means she left him. She, didn't buy she it. left it. Damn. He jerked off with a condom? Why not? All right. I jerked off with a condom before. When? Years ago, but when look at your mouth, Listen, look at your lying no, ass mouth. No, it's not, we have video too, we can zoom into it. Your like mouth this. gets like that puckered nope. up. Put like this is I tried to do everything in life before, you understand? So I definitely jerked off. Did you put your dick in a vacuum? Not in a vacuum, in what probably in the hose, maybe. Yeah, in the hose, real young, in the hose of the vacuum cleaner and yeah. turned it on and sucked it. I probably put my meat in the vacuum hose. Um, I put in a Vaseline jar, grape right. jelly. You say anything. I smashed grape jelly and Do Vaseline. Do you remember after you did the whole Vaseline thing, Ariana asked me for Vaseline? Whoa, no. <laughs> and I was like, no Vaseline for like a two and months. And she was all about Vaseline, Vaseline, Vaseline. Why? Like, she listened to us. Hey, that was you. Not That was your show, not Jesus me. Jesus Christ. <laughs> nothing to do with me. <clears throat> Anywho, thank you so much for interacting with us on social media and then definitely like the clips that go out, listening to the podcast. That's really dope. So shout out to Mr. Swanson. I don't want to say your first name again. Yo. Meet, meet Swanson. Meet Swanson. Let's see if it works. Aha. You like that? What's that? All right. We're going to go into the pet peeve of the week. Um, that sound like Star Trek. It did, right? Mm-hmm. It was just a little transition. So... I do have a pet peeve of the week because I've told you this a few times. I feel like you're not listening to me. So maybe you'll listen to That was nasty. Sorry, beautiful. Maybe you listen to me on here on the podcast. And I'm Sorry. sure some of y'all ladies are going through this as well. Um, I have a pet peeve of cell phones at the dining room table. Right. So when we're eating breakfast or when we're eating dinner, anything like that, he lately has been on the phone and it, to both of our defenses, I work off my phone. He works on his phone. Like, a quick phone call could could make us a couple hundred grand. Like, yeah, uh, you know what I'm saying. Come uh, on, baby. I said a couple hundred grand. Damn, we rich. I said a couple grand. I really meant a couple grand. A couple hundred dollars, a couple grand, and a phone call, right? But okay. to me, we don't eat for that long, I, right? You no, know, as soon as you said that, I said, hold on, baby, you holding back some motherfucking information. What the fuck you mean a couple hundred grand? What the fuck you got going on? <laughs> I was gonna definitely talk to you right after the show. <laughs> oh, don't your, just get past that shit. A couple hundred grand. What the fuck you got going what's on? What's your account look like? <laughs> Shit. I'm holding some shit from you. Uh, no, no, no. But we don't eat for that long. And I feel like the dining room table should be a place where we just spend time mm. together, like an, an uninterrupted time, just like when we're here in this podcast. Like, just, we're what, there, 20 minutes? You know, I'm in the Respect. kitchen slaving for two hours, Respect. but we literally only eat for 20, 25 minutes. So I just want that to be the time when you're, we're really active and looking at each other, especially right now when the baby's there with us. Like, yes. the baby's been breaking shit at the table because you're not paying attention. <laughs> no, yes, and no, and yes, and no. And yes, and yes. So, I would really, I really can't stand when people are on the phone oh, wow. at the table. I feel like, I feel unseen, it's rude. So, can we work on that? No, a thousand percent. You know what I'm saying? I know, I already worked on it, and it's already done. Have you noticed that I've literally been leaving my phone in the room when, when we go eat? I don't even have it around. That's good. You gotta tell me when you're doing it. See, the thing is, what she does, Taurus... Is she is sit there and do something? Oh, I'm so good at it now. I'd have been disciplined. She probably was trying to do this for four years, <laughs> and she finally get a hold of it. And now I'm supposed to be right now cold turkey. It, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna work on it. And I, I hear you. And I, I, I get that respect. Like you said, you've been in there for two hours, and I give yeah. you respect. To, you know, give your whole invited attention and hear you talk about something. I don't. Sometimes we don't maybe talk about nothing. It would just be like. Talk about what the what the food tastes like, or mm-hmm. it could be anything, but it's still talking to me. And I feel seen. Like I'm here, home by myself all day. All right, I, I see you. You know what I'm saying? It's a feeling. I see you though. I don't want you to think I don't see. I see you. But it's a feeling of feeling unseen. It is. Yes. Sometimes I don't think you see me. When I be asking you for something, you tell me no. I'm like, she don't fucking see. Oh no, me no, I said you. I said no. See, I acknowledged you and said no. 
That's fucked up. But that never happens. Oh. That rarely happens. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're talking about you weren't getting nothing. Now you're getting plenty. Anywho, we're going to go over to the from the therapist couch. But before we do, we are sponsored by BetterHelp yeah. for our therapist couch. So if you're looking for a therapist, BetterHelp will assess you with your needs and match you with your own licensed professional. You can literally, as soon as you start, start talking to a professional within 24 hours. It's not a crisis line and it's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. It is way more affordable than traditional counseling. You don't have to go into an Stop. office. You're doing it straight from home like we do. Yes. Like right here, he smokes, we drink tea, we talk to her. Like he walks out. He's done it before. He walked out of therapy session. I kind of I kind of said a couple of F words and stuff like that. And I left out of Because imagine if you're at the actual therapist's office, right? And you walk out. You got to go to your car. Get, <laughs> go home yeah, mad as that looks stupid. Especially when we was going before, I was on, I had my, my injury. So I was on the crutches. So I'm pissed off trying to go down the fuck off. Fuck this. I'm tired of this fucking shit. You can't leave as fast as you left from here. You just did stay we ever your leave house. the therapist's office not arguing? Yeah, we did. We have left. By, I think the only, there's only been two times that I can remember we finished therapy arguing. It was one time, and actually, Angela was here for that. <laughs> the <prescription>. like, fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> Angela's probably like, damn, they're about to not be together after Man, this fuck one. This fucking, fucking celebrity dude. What, what is it anyway? What? Premarital counseling? No, fucking, with, like, her, wow. it, with her, it's just counseling. Jesus. Premarital Christ. counseling, I want us to start with. Hold on. The, so we got to do more premarital oh, counseling? Oh, now that the date is set, we have to start now. We have to start right now for actual premarital counseling. How are we going to stay together through this? What do you mean? That's the best part of it all. That We're going to go through it all and then walk down the aisle. It's going to be amazing. Aren't you this excited? Premarital counseling got me smoking. We haven't even started premarital counseling. Premarital counseling is going to include money, how we handle money, how we handle parenting, like all kinds of different scenarios. I can tell how you do it by just looking at you. Okay, well, we have to go through it in counseling. So, anyway, the whole point of that is okay, betterhelp.com. <laughs> betterhelp. Betterhelp.com. Help me. Four slash WSS. That way you can get 10% off. And if you need financial assistance, you can definitely get financial assistance from them. Let them know. I know plenty of our listeners that have done so. So get that done. Yes. And now going over to the therapist couch. Today we're going to talk about, um, it was something we talked about in therapy. And that? it was compromise, getting compromised from a man's perspective of being a protector. So giving you a little bit of a background on that. I was very frustrated with Wax because there are certain places he didn't want me to go or he, he's like, don't go here, don't go there, don't go alone. And it's from his protector side, right? And I was pushing on it really hard. I guess we can start with when I first moved here. I'm by myself, I'm alone, and my friend was coming and she has family and a place here called Patterson. <laughs> Who's so, so I wanted to go Shout to Patterson. To Patterson though, but you know what I mean? Yeah, they, they know who they are. They know they're... What time it is over there. So I wanted to go to Patterson, New Jersey, and he said, absolutely not. You're not taking the baby. You're not taking the truck over there. And I'm like, whose daddy do you think you are? Because it ain't mine. You got two kids, and I'm not one of them. Then I was like, fine. I won't go to Patterson. I'm going to go to Jersey City. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm from Florida. I go anywhere. You know, like, it's never been a thing. But he's like, no, not here. You got Florida plates. You have a brand new truck, blah, 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 blah. And I'm not thinking much of it. I'm just pissed off because I feel like he's telling me what to do. And in his eyes... After we dealt with all these issues, he was trying to protect me. That's all it is. So speaking on that, he's a he's a big time protector. But sometimes as women, we might take it depending on, you know, sometimes there are some men out there that are really trying to control you. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. There are some men that and are. I don't have to sit there and, and come into you and get an argument with you. I'm never going to do that. And I know that's going to definitely get an argument because you let, you want to know why. And I got to sit there and listen to you and talk to oh, you. Oh, but I do like it. to know why. I, but that's not, that's, that's a, either argument or a long conversation. I which, like, which long you conversations know, are I, cool. But you know I'm not going after that. So if I'm telling you something, it's not to sit there and try to, you know, play around or something. I'm looking everything for safety. I know. And I'm looking at it as my eyes. And I'm like, I don't even go there. You know, I'm faster, I'm stronger, you know what I'm saying? I got more of a present of people not going to be like, that's not an easy target, because that's what people are going after right now. I am. So, when we're talking to the therapist, I just knew she was going to be on my side. I knew it for sure. She Thank was going to be like, yeah, great. So, basically, there's a difference, though. She explains to us that her husband is a former military yes. man. 
So she's like, you know, he's the same way with me. And I'm like, how? Now there's something else that wax does. There are flashlights everywhere. Yes. In the house. Flashlights yeah, like everywhere. I got, I got a bunch of matches. Like, so, be ready. Uh, so he asks her, oh, what about flashlights? And I start laughing because I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. And she's in her office and literally, because we're virtually doing um, counseling, and she pulls a flashlight. And she's like, he has them everywhere for me too. And I have to call him and all these things. And I was like, whoa, so it's not just me. No. But I also do think that it has to do with your profession what you do and the field that you're in same thing with her it's military but i think this is supposed to be men though as a man our job really at the end of the day our base is to protect and provide Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and i want to do that if i can't do nothing else at the best of my ability those two things have to be done i don't never want to come home and just like you know something happened one of the doors was open or you know what I'm saying? I don't. I lock the house up every single night. I bring the flashlights all throughout the whole property and make sure everything's d- good. Bring the dogs and everything with me. I don't care. I just got to lock the place up. I hear you. I can't even go to sleep without it. I'll be pissed off. I see one of the doors open. I'm like, yo, that could just been a, a time something could have happened. And we, we're we covered by the blood of God. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's like, yes. And I tried I, to bring that up. Aren't we covered? Yeah, I'll be we, okay. We are, <laughs> but we also are wise. And we see the things that's going on out here. You know what I'm saying? So if you got to still just be maybe a little wiser, you know what I'm saying? We don't want no problems. We stay out the way. Just Sometimes we fight back, and I think it's because we're looking back to our past. So when we were talking after, I think, I don't know if that was the therapy session that you walked out on or not. I'm not really sure. But I remember talking to her. Maybe it was a solo thing that I did with her. But it's from my past, you know, being controlled as much as I was by my family, you know, being the girl. And it's like, you can't do this, but the boys can do this. And I, it, it, it triggered me a little bit. I did feel like I can do what I want. I'll be safe. But I had to realize that I entered into a certain life with someone that's from here that I just probably can't be out all the time. But we did come to a compromise because my bachelorette party is coming. It is? Yes. What's that? Where we go? Girls gone wild. What do you mean? Before the wedding. <laughs> Premarital counseling. <laughs> bachelorette. Uh. No, no. So the bachelorette party's coming. He's like, wherever we're going, he wants me to have security. And I'm like, what? Where's the bachelorette party? I don't know. But remember we talked about this? At some island. We're going somewhere. I really don't know. I, don't, I won't know until we go. They don't tell me. They'll tell you, most likely. But they won't tell me, like, it'll be a secret to me. The girls will make it a secret to me. But anyway. so Do you we, know what happens on those trips? Yes. The girls get together and have a good time. Yeah, strippers and smashing no, people no, no, sucking no, 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 dick no. and they over here getting smashed all crazy. Who? What? What? What do you have, think happened at bachelorette parties? Girls, Especially on islands. That's when everything on the island stays on the island. No, we're going. We're going to have fun with the girls. We're going to drink. We're going to get a Unless big you have house. a licking party. You do I, not so go out there on a different island. Sweetheart, I am so sorry. This is the experience you've had with women your whole life. Oh I, I really am sorry. Like, I feel bad for you that you... all women's island? I am so sorry that this is what you've been through. But anyway, we can't... This is going to be hard. Why I got everything got to be so hard right before the wedding? It's like everything to chop your legs down and make you be like, man, fuck this, is what happens right before the wedding. Like, how you expect a man to actually go through this shit? You're going to have a bachelor party. Man, I ain't got time for that shit, man. We, We probably going bowling. Okay, we are going to be hanging out as well. Man, bullshit on a fucking island. Anyways, the point That's is how that you get smashed. We compromised on security, but it would be a female. Man, fuck that. You got some males going this time. No, you want niggas around these bitches? They, you think they you, watching you, think, you? You think they're not gonna be watching me when they're trying to fuck my girls? Yeah, once you in the room and secure and everything, and have piss somebody by the door, you go fuck the girls. You come back. We know how to fucking do this shit. <laughs> You go fuck, <laughs> no, you no, stay no, no, here no. and watch it and you la, la, la. Not happening. Anyway, compromise happens when I know his mind goes one way, my m- mind goes another. I'm like, I, I don't want to be controlled. He's like, yeah, I got to protect you. So we come into separate little compromises. This right here is trying to protect you not to suck a dick. Uh, who's going to suck a dick? I'm just saying. This is who's like, gonna suck what a the dick? fuck do you think happened to girls at bachelorette parties? Am bro. I retarded? Yo, Angel, can you come here real quick, bro? Please, this is man. ridiculous. This is it's not. Please, Mm-mm. please, please. No, bro. you're tripping. I'm not, and I'm sorry. You are tripping. What you think happens at bachelorette parties, bro? Yeah, it's bad news. Actually, when me and my girl, when we eventually get married, we're gonna definitely do a joint bachelor party. Who the fuck? Yeah. Joint where? Joint. Whatever it is, it's gonna be joint. Oh, get the fuck <laughs> out of here. What I'm saying? So am I wrong? Nope. 
Thank you, bro. And I want all the other guys up in here too. If you feel like I feel, holla at me because this is kind of wild. You about to go on an island with a bunch of girls. Yes. Y'all about, y'all about to go drink. Yes. And hang out and have fun and party. I'm gonna wear my. Yeah. I'm gonna wear my yeah. thing. My jiggy. What's this? Yeah. Oh. Oh. The knock, knock, knock. Oh, you left your your, your license is suspended. <laughs> Put your hands behind your back. That is not. First of all, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Let me tell you something. That is the most unattractive thing there is. Yeah. Good job. So not unattra- when you're drunk. I would. Hell no. A pain, you know how you know how good a fucking unattractive woman looks when you're drunk. I don't. All right, but for guys, that girl looking pretty okay, every so fucking why, sip. So why are you putting your mind on ours? It's not it's just people. Like no, saying, no. You said, do you know? And it, even it's guys. It's, I'm sure other so girls. So you think okay, I'm that nothing, way? I'm not saying that. But so leave girls, it alone. When girls get little it's bit It's my tipsy, bachelorette. If bitches mm. want to fuck, they can fuck. It's my bachelorette. You trust me, you're marrying me. I understand that. All right, so leave it All alone. All these other guys fucking trust them girls, oh too. Oh, my God. We got to go back to counseling about this. We need a whole other session about the fucking bachelorette party. So moving right along, betterhelp.com forward slash WSS. We'll be well, using it this week. Better help me. <laughs> we understand will, what the we fuck will is work going on, on with a bachelorette party. This just went sideways. I thought we resolved this. What are you talking about? How the fuck we resolve? You said you were saying. Bachelorette resent- party with girls that's going to sit there and be trying to either lick each other or somebody getting licked. Okay. Um... Th- Right. Moving right along. I hope this is past the word. <laughs> <laughs> Go straight to Jesus. Amen. Take it to Jesus. <laughs> we, got to, we got to pray on this one. Lord. Right. This show is also brought to you by Who's Wax Gummies. Hey. Look at this. <laughs> They are, listen, we had an order of 300 yesterday. We had to fill yes. one order. So stock is definitely running low. Order your gummies. It's we really had good. sex all night last night and this morning because yeah, of these fucking gummies. <laughs> Wax got a, call, a text talking about you don't got to go into work in the morning. <laughs> it was over. I opened up the, ba- the bag and just shoved it in my mouth. And I was like, let's do it. It was either. She, she talked about she was tired. I'm like, hold on. I got to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> You, I'm like, it's either, okay, let her go to sleep and don't get none, or let her get, get a gummy and we, we, ain't going, we ain't nobody going to sleep. We didn't go to sleep till 4, four o'clock in the morning. In the fucking morning. I was just telling the babysitter, I was like, why was I crying about missing my dad at 3 o'clock in the morning? I got time for that shit, man. There's so many moods <laughs> happens with these shits, yo. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's like happy moods. We just, just like, finished what having sex ah. for like two hours. And all of a sudden I'm crying about missing my dad. I said, this is, I think that was the smoking of the weed, though. That was because Both I told them together, I the said, who's wax plus the who's wax is really out of control. No, I smoke too much with you. It was you kept like giving me smoke, and I'm like, no, I'm good. You got me too high. But, anyways, the gummies themselves, if you're trying to have a baby, get on these gummies. If you're not trying to have a baby, get on the gummies and put a condom on <laughs> and have a good time. Yeah, these things are different. So, you might to, miss work and be a little late, too. You, so, try to do it during the weekends. Do it on the weekends. Don't do it too, or do it early, <laughs> eight o'clock ish. That way, you, you can wake up. Blame it on me this morning. Fuck you. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. The person might listen. I, hey, if you listen to it, I will come No, up. no, 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 no. No, 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 we're not I doing this. I woke you up. Okay, y'all. Yeah. No, you didn't. We're going to move on. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. It, it is what it is. Moving right along. For, for this week, we wa- we watched church yesterday, right? God bless. And we alternate between Bishop um, T.D. Jakes, Jakes and J.J. Of, of Journey Church in Orlando. And yesterday I was like, oh, let's do, so Bishop is one of those, how do I explain it? Bishop is like a, a traditional mm-hmm. pastor. You're going to get the word. You're going to get like, you just, you're going to nah, feel yeah, it. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It's food for your soul. That's like the, uh, the uh, potato salad and, and the stuffing for, for things. But it gives it to you in a, in a, mm. in a really Ooh, yeah. deep, like, like only Bishop could do. Like T.D. Yeah. Jakes is the only one that can give that to you. Yeah. Now, I really, really love JJ, Pastor yeah. JJ, because he, I feel like we're, Listening to a friend, like a, like one mm-hmm. of our homeboys, talking that really has kids just like we do. He's our metaphors. age. Him and his wife remind me a lot of us. So mm-hmm. it's a lot of metaphors, and it's it's really dope listening to him. So he brought something his, up. His like riding a bike, a motorcycle down there. You know what I'm saying? You enjoying that? You know how you get the yes. most fulfillment out of something? TD Jakes fulfills you with the food. You know what I'm saying? That full filling. JJ fulfill you with the like the. The, oh, okay, I get that. Oh, yeah, he brought it to me that way, right, the, the like, smart, dumb way. And like, uh. <laughs> it feels like 
you're in a comedy show and at the end you're like fuck it hits you at the end you know what I'm yeah, saying like it's like God. the word at the end like it hits you but you're enjoying it like a comedy show in the beginning so if you guys want to check out a new a new pastor or whatever uh, yes. Journey Church Orlando because I think there's another one on YouTube really but dope. he really really is good but he talked about one thing and mm-hmm. it was doing things that you don't like out of love for your partner do you remember that part of the sermon mm-hmm. so he was saying that there are times that his wife um, tells him that you gotta go shopping <laughs> <laughs> and we both laugh because I'm not, I don't love shopping, but if I have to go to the store, I want him to come with me. Uh. So I'm like, every time I'm like, yo, let's do this. And he starts arguing, but why? But why? The same way he just told y'all when I asked him about protection or why I can't go somewhere, I'm saying, why, why, why? When I'm like, go shopping with me, why? But why? And starts a whole fight. I can fight. get to you at this store. It's not too far away. If something happens, you're like, your wax, you're my flat tire, your wax, some dude, your wax, they doing something. I can, I can get to you close enough. But that's not what it is. The whole point is that we want somebody, we want our partner to come with us out of love. We, I, I love spending that time with love. you. love. But only but, time you want me to come with me if we argue, you want to you want to piss me off. That's, that's when I got to go to the store with you. When I oh. IKEA, we've been arguing. No, IKEA, you take you we end take up, my life away. We end up arguing because I'm like, we're going to IKEA. Why? Why I gotta go to IKEA? Why I gotta go to Target? Now he hates Target apparently since we got together. So she took Target <laughs> away from me. I used to love Target because you said there was bitches there. Nah, now you can't get the bitches at Target. All right, that's it, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you wanted to go there for, <laughs> dickhead. I hate you. Anywho, the point is that even though you argue, you still go. And yes. although he has an attitude, I will, like, I get happy. He He's driving with an attitude, straight face. Yes. I don't want to talk. I talk to you at all. Smoking hella weed in the car. When I tell you hot boxing my ass in the car, knowing that I don't want to be high in the middle of the day. Oh. So whole attitude that I really, like, after he, the attitude kind of subsides, I'm really, really grateful that he came with me. So we still do things that we don't like out of love for our, uh, for our partner. He's yeah. coming. He's like, why are you coming anyway? Uh, I wish you wouldn't come. I mean, I try my best not to come. I'm telling you, I, I don't have nothing. I can't find my boot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> something, I got something about to come up. Somebody about to come over. She I, don't give a They're going to have to wait. No, because I want you to come with me. <sighs> It's just, it, it's Please. one of those things that I really, really do. But do you understand that takes something away from me? Mm-mm. Ikea takes, it just But guess does what? To but me. that's what a relationship is and what a partnership is. Sometimes you have to do, I do things for you that I don't like to do. And there's sometimes. There's no way you don't, there's nothing amounts to Ikea. <laughs> there's nothing I would ask you to do. That would, you can't. You no know way. what amounts to Ikea when I'm tired? so tired and you just start creeping up and humping me from behind and i'm like i'm tired i want to hear that and here you go dry humping some more and here he goes come on just a little bit that's ikea right there that's not ikea just a little bit a little bit ikea know why because guess what but guess what i bet you that you end up enjoying that at the end I don't enjoy so do you. Yes, you, know, you, do. you, 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 you have you, a you great know, time. I have you, a great time. You have a great time telling employees that I'm looking for Vagiso. Yes. <laughs> you have a fun time. Yes. You did something recently. What did you do? I can't remember. Oh, we went to the movie theater. <laughs> we not supposed to leave out. We went out to go smoke. Because we, we had some food coming. We probably ordered the whole fucking menu. Oh, man. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, we got to smoke so we can enjoy this shit. You know? so, so we walking out and we seeing a guy. I'm like. What the fuck can I tell him? Like, yo, we going to get some tampons real quick. <laughs> she forgot her tampons, and I'm looking like, what the fuck he going to say? You? you got some hair for her? Nah, nah, she got her own, bro. She need the fucking uh, or- organic <laughs> shit. <laughs> I hate you so much. It's amazing. But let me go back to that. Okay, though. go back to that. At least look what we get out of sex at the end of the day. My dry hump will end up till we both enjoying and going to bed. Do you know what we Even get out of sleep. Ikea? Look, we have a table set up. You know, your the room is comfortable for you. You know how, you know how I bust a nut out of Ikea? At the register. <laughs> That's my nut bust. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then we get Ooh, home. Oh, this too, no. that too, that too. The register cup is like... Then but then we get home and everything gets put together and it's so nice for you to have your things organized and know where they are and it looks yes. good. So, it, and then we got to spend time together and laugh and get lost in the parking lot, you know? 
Yeah, so, because she don't. Oh my god. Okay, so actually, this, this is a good segue into the other topic that I had, and I had a conversation with a friend of mine recently, and we were like, "What does polygamy look like, and do I want to be a polygamist?" What's that? Um, when you have multiple spouses. Ooh. So let's start with you. How it seems perfect on paper. So I'm talking to her about how, you know, we have someone that helps me clean and someone that helps me with the baby, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a baby, we have a nanny, and then we have a cleaning person. And I'm like, that gets really expensive. Like, it really is very expensive to have someone, you know, here, especially in this house. So she goes, well, what about if he had, you guys had a girlfriend, right? Mm. And she was at the house, and she did all the cooking, the cleaning, the watching the baby. But then occasionally, she had to get fucked. All right. So on paper, it sounds great. That means we would eliminate a large chunk of our expense Money. a month of what we pay for cleaning and child care. And it sounds great on paper because I'm like, wow, we don't have to pay for this. There's someone already here. Whenever we want to go out to, to a date night, she's here. Um, when I don't want to have sex, I'm just be like, you know what? Not tonight. I'm so tired. Just go to the room upstairs to the girl <laughs> and go have sex up there. Where's this paper at? <laughs> <laughs> excuse me no i'm not saying for me i'm just saying where's the paper at? so it sounds great <laughs> and i'm like wow that sounds like a really good idea but then when realistically i put myself into the scenario because I, there people do do this of course it's a thing polygamy is a thing you just told me dr umar got married to two women right amazing he just got married to two women there's some that have like three women but when i put me into that you know that picture I just see red and I'm like, there's no way I can not want to have sex and know that he's up there, you know, smashing a woman that then I have to go have breakfast with the next day. You snap too much. I what? You snap too much. What do you mean? You never even know. You'd be like, yeah, bring her over. That's cool. So once you get at the door, boy, Lord have mercy. <laughs> but it I changed does, my mind. But it does sound good. I, I, can, <laughs> I can see why people would have sister wives. Yes. But what if it wasn't the reverse? What if I had, what if it was two men, right? Yeah, that's what happens. And <laughs> what if it was two men, but I only One have guy going to be in a wheelchair. It's not going to be me. What? <laughs> <laughs> Like you stop right there, buddy. What if it was just a man and another man in the house to like put things up, like yeah, my my job. board that hasn't yeah. been put up in good weeks, job. or these two tables that haven't been good built, job. or my thing at the bar that hasn't good been put job. up, so he could just be around, right? And maybe yeah. I don't. Um, yeah, good job. I don't know. Yeah, no. well, one of us be in the wheelchair, and it won't be me. On one of the one two girls are gonna be in the wheelchair, and it no, won't be me. And I won't. So polygamy is not for us to say the least, but when her and I were talking about it, it seemed really good. Like when we were running it, it seemed like a perfect scenario for us. Yeah, sounds good. It's great. It sounds great? No, not for us, but it sounds amazing <laughs> on paper, like you said. On paper, the paper. Just on the paper. I already know this whole shit is a setup. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to just play it as the show going, then it's like... I'm going to have to talk to it after, after, after the show. And I was like, I want to see how many times you said it sounds good. No, I said it on paper. <laughs> but if, if anybody is a polygamist that's listening to this or has tried it or has had a sister wife of some sort, I really want to hear from you what that was like in real life. Cause you know, you yeah. see it on like TLC or like the, the show sister wives, but I don't know. any. Oh, that's actual... what sister wives is. I thought sister wives are just like, Two sisters. Oh, it's like two sisters. Right? Sister wives. They're wives, and they're kind of like they don't fuck. They fuck him. They're sister wives. I, never, I, I need to watch that show because that's, we, no, that's what we need to do. No, that's okay. Moving right along. You brought it up. All right. Anyways, well. so this one, this pinky promise right now, well. we're not gonna. It's not gonna be an argument. Oh, we're well. just gonna have a straight conversation. You're gonna say your point. I'm gonna say my point, and then we just leave it. Oh. Deal. Oh. Deal. Okay, we, you think you promised. So we want to talk about responsibilities of co-parenting. Mm -hmm. So we had a conversation that turned into a whole lot. He scared the new cleaning lady. She went home distraught. I'm sorry, Miss Mama. She thinks he's a monster. Not really, Mamas. Because listen, I, she don't understand English. So she do understand English. She understand English. She don't understand. I I understand. I know Buta, Marigon. <laughs> Uh, chupa me pinga and all this type of that baby. Bit. I know certain shit like that. If I hear that, I know oh, this nigga get cursed out over here. 
So in English, if I'm saying fuck, you know, so him and I shit like are that. talking, and all she hears is stupid fucking bitch, stupid bitch, fucking bitch, stupid. And I'm just like, and my son, my son, stupid fucking bitch. And I'm like, whoa. So basically, what happened was we're having a conversation about responsibilities of co parenting, right? And what does that look like? Him and I, and I, we've been very open about this, we have two very different, uh, what's it called, perspectives on co parenting yes. or what that looks like because. For me, I've had a father who growing up wasn't very active until this day. We have a lot of differences, myself and my baby daddy. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with him and his baby mama. They have a completely different dynamic than I have. So we have two different worlds that we live in when it comes to our children. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk to you about two things. What is your ideal co-parenting situation? Is when, you know, if y'all not together no more. If I was married to you, and you don't have another man, I still that's still my responsibility. I don't care if you don't never get another man for 10 years. You and my kid, the household, the cars, and everything is still my responsibility. I just took myself out of that situation. Okay. You see what I'm saying? The second you get a man, the second you put another penis in your mouth, another penis goes in you, that is that man's responsibility to take care of the household and whatever the case may be. Not my kid. Anything that my kid needs... Is my responsibility. I don't as care long as you, she's not with anybody else. As long as she's not with nobody else. Okay. Because that's that's this man's responsibility. Because now at the end of the day, if I'm doing that and he's living there, what if he's I'm not taking care? There? If he's not living there, that's still it's my still my responsibility. She's gonna go sneak off and get some penis wherever. I, like I, I can't I'm not gonna micromanage that. You see okay. what I'm saying? So but, you so your your point is as a man because really what I want to do this for is like please. a man's perspective, a man's perspective and a woman's mm-hmm. perspective. So your perspective as as wax is. As long as she's not living, so she could be smashing someone. As long as you don't know. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't care if you sneak off. You know, you gotta get yours off. I have nothing to do with that. But if you have a man okay. that's taking care of you, y'all living together, whatever the case may okay. be, it's really hard for me to sit there and still take care of a household or anything like that. I can respect that. If my son or my kid need anything, mm-hmm. you holler at me about that. I don't care if it's a laptop. I don't care if it's game. I don't care if it's sneakers, clothes, school for school clothes haircuts or whatever the case may be. So that, is the household still your responsibility? No, not when the man is there. When the, no but way. what if the man's not there, but you might know she's sneaking away? That ain't got nothing to do with me. You you're, the household still yeah, your responsibility? still my okay. responsibility. To if I know you have a man, there's no way that I will allow or we want your baby father's money coming to this household. I hear you. That have nothing. This, yo, I'm paying this from the child support. He was like, I mean, get the fuck out of here with that shit. That's not gonna, put that in her bank account. That goes straight to her at the end of the day anyway. You know what I'm saying? I play by the rules. I I don't really like the people who take advantage of that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Because you're still taking from somebody at the end of the day. God, I see you. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Just so, like I pay my tithes and offerings, and I believe that God's going to bless me through my tithes and offerings. Because we don't mind. When we pay our tithes, we don't know where that money's going. And us coming. I ain't from, got nothing to do us, with us. Us coming. You know what? That's actually a that's really faith. good, um, not analogy, but like a good comparison. Because I remember me growing up in the church. My grandfather was a pastor. Your dad was a pastor. And mm-hmm. coming from like some bigger churches, when you pay your tithes, you really don't know how that money is being used within the church. Mm-hmm. You just have to have the faith that God said, give the 10% and Do it goes part. wherever it goes. I've seen churches where the pastors misuse that money. And I've seen mm-hmm. churches where they use the money for what really it's supposed to be. Yes. So when you're paying child support as a father, sometimes I f- you're like, where's that money going to? I want to know. Yes. But shouldn't it be kind of like when you pay your tithes, that is just, you know, you give it, and wherever it goes, it goes as long as things are being taken care of. Yeah, no, I want to know what, and that right there, I want to know. So not like your tithes? No, it's not like your tithes. You know what I'm saying? I have, I don't have faith. I, I, have a, I don't see Jesus. I, I see my son. I want to, I could be able to touch my son. Okay. You see what I'm saying? I want to be able to see like what you need. That that going to build a relationship with me and my son. So this you is, see what so I'm this saying? is, so this is the ideal co-parent situation for me. As for me as a woman, an ideal co-parenting, what that looks like. I think he. He sees it as a financial, and, and that's one something that I want to really point out here, that men see a co-parenting um, relationship as a financial thing. For me, as a woman and as a mom, when I think of co-parenting, I think of communication. Ideal. Ideal, I'd say communication, that we can speak about any and everything when it comes to our child and be okay with it. We can be in the same room, and it's fine. Nothing's awkward. You can be around my new partner and not have it and not have any issues. And I also see as an ideal co-parenting someone that is really there consistently. And ideally for that to happen, we would have to live in the same city, you know, for us to be like in really close proximity where if the child has any 
games or practices or, or close enough or close enough where it's like, if I can call you and say, Hey, I need you to pick her up today. Oh, no problem. I got it. Or I got it this time. Or we really have like a really good 50, 50 split where I don't feel overwhelmed with the day to day responsibility with a child. I think one thing that men don't truly understand, and I don't expect them to because we're as mothers, that's our responsibility. But the day to day responsibility of a kid is draining. It's draining being like, mommy, mommy, this mommy, that look at this. Look at that. Like even at King's age, when he was here for the month, it's like, Carla, look at this. Carla play with me. He would really like come in here in the office and be like, when it, when are you going to, are you done? Are you done? Like every 20 minutes. And I'm like, why? I, he just wanted me to come watch him jump off the diving board. Or he oh. just wanted me to see something in his game. Or he wanted me to watch something on YouTube with him. Or he wanted me to see, it was just always something. It's very draining to give this attention to a child. And maybe you can't understand it as a father. Cause the fathers don't necessarily, you know, give that much attention to them. But think no, about how, but think about how often <laughs> when you were a child, you would want your attention from your mother. It's I like mommy this, that. mommy that, mommy that, and it's so draining. So anyway, you understand that though, you know what I'm saying? When daddy come around, the kids stay around with the dad. Mm, yes, but no. When they're around with you, then we're like, oh, let's go sleep in the kitchen, and now let's go cook, or let's go get their bath water ready, or let's go clean up the mess that they made the all day while they're hanging us. out with you. you know what I'm saying it's still, it's still with but, us. But it's not, but it's not man. downtime for us. Just because the baby's with you doesn't but mean that it's downtime. That's, it don't matter. That's a mother's duty. That when you right. open your legs, when you sit there and have a baby. These are the duties of a woman. The man part is the part that he have to do. I hear you. You know what I'm saying? Just like I say, if there's no other man inside the house, that is still my responsibility. So now I want to talk about what this, what's what co-parenting look, co-parenting looks like to you when there is no communication. The communication is non-existent, and there's no relationship there between both parents. What does that look like to you? Disgusting. Kid hurt. Um. Just heard a he heard a relationship is kind of fucked up. I have been in the point where there is no communication, and what does that look like to me? That looks like to me a set amount of money every month. Don't ask me no questions. Show up when you have to show up, or don't show up if you don't want to show up. Like non-existent communication sucks. It sucks for the child. It sucks for the two parents because it's like you might have school supplies. A kid absolutely feels yeah, it. He understands. So how do you make it to? mend that relationship in a way where the kid does not feel it um I stay out the way you know what i'm saying just stay out the way and then hopefully time and god heals whatever need to be healed and just let it go at the end of the day like you I think said, god can heal everything with time god can heal everything at a, at a split time you know what i'm saying that's what he does he worked miracles you know what i'm saying he worked on people's hearts he, certain things just happen you know what i'm saying you don't want to do it no more you know certain things you used to do like certain a lot of things i used to do Back in the day, I look at myself like, the oh, fuck, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I did that. Or I used to talk to that person. Or I was, I was like, I used to hang right there on that block every day. I was, that was my life. I know. You know what I'm saying? Right now, like I don't even go over there. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, with growth. You know what I'm saying? When people grow, when they get to that next stage. And I was talking to you last night about, you know, a lot of times people hold on to something. Mm -hmm. It don't even have to be an actual physical thing. It could be holding on to a grudge with somebody or, or whatever the case may be. Once soon as you let it go, God could be able to put you to the next stage and next stage got so many blessings that you, you going to let that thing go. You know what I'm saying? Everything in your life we is going to be able to go. We did have that conversation at like two so o'clock in the morning. And he kept bringing up my fucking pillow. Amazing. Leave my, no, do you know, this is, it, it's fucked up. And I, this is why I really Stop feel like, what? You saying the F word. <laughs> I just stopped cursing. <laughs> When? Now, right now? Again. <laughs> All right, bet. You can't curse again for this entire day. Gotcha. Got it. Okay. So basically, last night at 2 o'clock in the morning, he's talking about my dirty pillow. I have a pillow yes. that I've had since I was born. Oh I don't gosh. wash it. I don't do anything with it. Who's that. on drugs? I love my pillow. Like, it's my... You know, people have, like, blankets. It's I have my, my pillow. It's my who's on drugs pillow. Yes. So... Last night, he just kept talking about the pillow. You got to let things go. The pillow. You got to let things go. The pillow. And I'm like, I was using analogies, I just kept but the pillow just was right there the looking at me. The pillow kept coming up, and I was like, bro, you like... You're really pissing me off with this fucking pillow situation. Find something else to talk about. Leave my fucking pillow alone. So then today, yo, I'm, I'm mad as fuck about this. I don't know how I'm asleep. Amazing. So the babysitter is helping us clean up. She does laundry during the day, the nanny. And I look in the room and my pillow is naked. naked. The inside, it, it looks crazy as hell, but my, the covers. I, I thought it was just a bunch of shit. I'm oh like, my god! Put that on the fucking bed. So I run out of the room and I call her and I'm like, where is the cover? 
to my pillow. And she just looks at me. She's like, I said, did you watch? She's like, yeah. Yeah. I said, no, no. Why, why would you do that? She's like, what? And I'm like, is it wet? No, take it out. Like, take it out. Maybe it's not wet yet. She comes back out. She's like, it's wet. It's already in the washing machine. I am extremely anxious about going to sleep. It's been 34 years Good. that my pillow has never been washed. And, what, and I just talked to you about change. About and last night, so I really do feel like you brought this on because 34 years has never been done. And today my fucking pillow got washed. But guess what? And you're saying you, you didn't have nothing to do know. with it? I had nothing to do with it. But guess what? Is something changed in your life because you let something go? I say I always tell you when you want something to replace in your life, you got to let something go. I only got a better house. Because I don't have to let that one. go. I don't have to let my pillow go. My pillow's not bothering anybody. Pillow bothers me. I talk about it every night. Why does it bother you? I don't know. That's it's, exactly what you just now said. You 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 not every night. Shut when up. We have sex, so you have no problem. I don't even want to talk about that type of stuff. You, right so, all right. So what are you talking about? What what do is we it? Do that type of stuff. I thought we pray at night. We do. Right after. <laughs> you have to pray after oh, you have to because we do, we're really committing a singing every time we do it no, we don't have to. but anyway the point is i'm really upset about my pillow anywho the point right. is communication i don't know how we got how the fuck did we get here because i don't know we're moving right the fuck along i don't know how we got here i want to hit it sometime <laughs> boom I do got something to say. Talk to me. So I did a launch. It's my company outside yeah. of, every, I feel like I'm a serial entrepreneur at this time. Hey, at this point in time, we got so many things going on, but I did a launch where we launch podcasts and we have VIP days, which is basically podcasting in a day. You get, if you have it mostly for entrepreneurs that I'm working with, but if you want to launch your podcast, literally from idea to the launch and we do it between nine and 3 PM, you're done. Literally you sit with me from nine to three and your podcast is Artwork done. Yes. Trailer is engineered. Intro, outro. Your first episode is done. We get your first <laughs> month and a half. Of, it's a wow. lot of work. We do wow. we we'll do a lot of shit. But if you're interested you in that, hundred thousand for that. A hundred and fifty thousand. I'm just oh. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You, it, it is available to you. So if this is something that you're interested in, there's different ways to work with me. But go to carlawomares.com and you can schedule a clarity call with me. Okay. It's 15 minutes. We'll talk for a little bit and I'll see if you are eligible or if you're the right candidate for it. I might not be the right coach for you. I might not be the right person for you. But if you are, we can set up a time and we can get a date and we can get your podcast launched just like this one and literally one day and all you need is a microphone you can and your do computer. All this in one day. All of this in one day. The girl. I could be whatever she says in one day. No. So shout out to okay. uh, Rebound from Religion. Okay. Is the one that we just launched in literally one day. Rebound from Religion. I got it on iTunes by 5 p.m. that same day. Fire. And on Spotify, everybody. It's really good. She talks about, you know, she, you know, in the church like us, grew up in the church. And she's having her, she got divorced and having her issues with like the church and spirituality and like mm -hmm. which one is which. Where she should go. Hold on. Hold so hold she on. is going through that and she's taking everyone that's been to that. That for me would have been amazing a couple of years oh, ago awesome. when I felt like I was being, you know, shunned by the church because of the things mm -hmm. that happened. So if you guys feel in that type of way, rebounding from religion is a really good podcast to listen to launched by idea, to, launched by idea to launch, which is me. Anywho, moving. Can I put it again? I did it again. Can I, can, I, can I do it? Okay. You do it. You press the button. <laughs> That's kind of cool, man. Can I, be one, can I be the button pusher? You can be the button pusher. Mm. Now we have some questions from our listeners. Talk to us. Um, I'm going to keep her anonymous because I'm not, at no point while she was talking to me that she said she wanted to be known, but she's been DMing me for a while. Okay. And this is the second message she sent me. She says, hey, Carla, it's me again. Hey. <laughs> she says again because she's been messaging me. She says, I have a dilemma and I need some advice. I noticed that my current job brings me to stress and having the depression of being at work from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. and no time or life with my child. Mm. I'm strongly wanting to quit, but I know I need income coming in, and I don't know where that will come from to keep this my home. It's been in my mind for two months. I've just been trying to stick it out and hope it would make sense or get better. Every week I get the schedule, I feel like I'm still on the schedule, Ouch. but I know it's me that has to leave. Should I just say forget it and quit and let the adventure of income come in somehow to enjoy life and have a me that's happier. What do I do? Mm, being broker is not happier. <laughs> um, I would say find something first. You know what I'm saying? Cause you so still have to have I'll give you some, coming. I'll give you some back and she okay. is, she does hair. Oh, okay. So she's been doing like hair on the side here and there. So that's something that she wants to do and she loves to okay. and enjoys to that, do. I, that's what I was literally going to tell her. I was going right. to say like, Find things that you can do with, you can have your own schedules. You can work around your own schedules. Like, good, that's great. You do hair. Um, 
So she was saying that she's like using some of the Instagram pages to promote her stuff. So here's what I'm mm-hmm. going to tell you from having built businesses from the ground up. You have to start as a side hustle. So you're going to spend a lot of nights where you're not sleeping. That nine to five that you have right now or that two to ten is funding your side hustle. And this, like, we search a little bit from relationship because we both are super into business and, like, making money and finding ways to make money any which way or form. So you have to find a side hustle. And I don't recommend leaving your nine to five until that side hustle is generating enough income Mm -hmm. for you to at least be able to survive. Now, keep in mind, when I left my job, I had savings, right? When I left my whole career of accounting, I had a year's worth of savings. But in order for me to get that year's worth of savings, I didn't have cable for a while. I had, you know, my car insurance, me and I and I would go to the park. We would do a lot of things that were free. I didn't eat out as much. There were a lot of times that I said no to my friends to a lot of trips. So you have to find a way to cut back on expenses and live like you're broke while that income is coming in. Now mm-hmm. you have a cushion while you have this cushion and while you're creating this cushion, you need to hustle. And I think that's, hustle. that's what, how many people do you know want to do? I want to do this too. I want to get there, but they ain't hustling. Not one person. And they come to me and talk to me about things. And I'm like, Yo, y'all, y'all, this is like a broken record. Literally. You come and see what I got going on. And you come and take my energy. And that's what I see what people do. And I've got to stop that. And I see why people, I'd be like, why they change? And why they, why they don't do this? And why they do that? I see what's going on. Y'all drain the energy out of you. And then don't even do nothing with it. Yeah. And that's kind of fucked up that you come in there and take my time, my energy and everything. And tell me that, oh, I want to do this. I'm going to do that. And, and you know. Try to act like we're going to say something. You have nothing for it because your drive is just not there. Yo, is, is it really a decision, man? It's a mindset. You know, you're always talking about mode and mindset. When I just said, I would say no to my friends when I came to brunch, I didn't have cable. I used somebody else's Netflix account. I tried to use the least amount of gas. I lived like I was broke. And my daughter never noticed because kids don't care as long as you're spending time with them. Yo, I can go in the backyard with Diana. We could go to the dollar store and create. They have like paint and stuff. I mm-hmm. did those paintings. Actually, they're right here. King's paintings. That came from the dollar store. Hot. Canvases from the dollar and store. And I like stuff like that. That's a great he time. Love, actually, I have extra ones for you and yeah, I to paint. Yeah, fine. I do. So that literally came paint brushes from the dollar store, paint from the dollar store, canvases from the dollar store. And literally with seven bucks, we had an entire afternoon having fun so you can do all of this but don't tell me you don't have the time you're like you want to spend more time with your kids you got to put in the time now and this is not just for i mean i'm giving you advice but anybody else who's out there miserable with their nine to five right and they might look at us like wow she left her career you know you're doing all these businesses inside that make money you guys need to understand how much time he spends away from home how much time i'm spending away from you know the baby because i want to sit here and hustle and do what i have to do like before I'm going to say not so much. I'm not spending as doing it as much with song, but with Ayana, Ayana spent a lot of time not around me, but I made sure I made up for those times because I was working on my hustle. I was hustling really, really hard. So if you don't know what hustle is and if you got time to watch Netflix and if you have time to be hanging out at brunch, then you're not you're not really ready to to start a, a career because when you go into entrepreneurship, you're going to be working three times as hard as you're doing in that nine to five. Yes. Like if three times, it might be like an understatement. Yeah. Like, yes. It's like five times, like really two hours of sleep. Sometimes Shh. people have no idea. I sneak, I sneak on flights and I'm yeah. usually fly almost every week. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I got to sneak on flight. Yo, how many hours got, got there, baby? I got to fly in. I got a two hour meeting and I got to fly right back. You know what I'm saying? Like I got so many times. I got to, and I'm talking about the LA. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know and that's a whole and that is years and years of time i've only been in entrepreneurship on my own for about four years now three to four years now which is nothing compared to where he's been going because i had my nine to five and i had that paycheck that was coming in every friday and it felt amazing and that security when you come into entrepreneurship man you have really good months really good months i've had Up, high down, five figure down. months and then i've had months that it was like a thousand dollars and I was like, fuck. So you have to be good with your money. And the, and the thing is, with, with having the job, is just like people coming after your company. People coming after your brand of the company. Right. When you're an entrepreneur, they're coming straight at you. So you got to deal with all that, plus still having the same mindset to still go forward, not even hearing all the noise and the, and the bands and the parades and stuff that's going on around you. You got to really go forward yeah. and not even under, listen to none of the noise around you. Entrepreneurship is super glamorized and you don't realize there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into it, but it's very rewarding. It's very rewarding. It's rewarding to me when I know that I can be home and when my babysitter says, oh my God, on this day, I can't come. Can I do it? I'm like, you know what? I'll change my schedule. Man. It's not a problem. Yeah. I don't have to worry about, can, I got to call my boss or whatever. It's, it is an amazing feeling, but entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is not for everybody. So to you, I would say if you really are this unhappy, it's only been two months. 
that you've been really struggling with it, I would say to you, start your exit plan. So now I'm going to give you an actionable. Start an exit plan. Mm -hmm. Write down and say, you know what? I need X amount of money in bills for the next six months. Yes. I'm going to now build my clientele from this to this. I'm mm -hmm. going to hustle. If I charge X amount for braids or I charge X amount for coloring your hair, that means I need to do five heads this month to mm -hmm. make this month. Write it numbers down exactly. Write, yeah, absolutely. Write down what you need and get it done. What does that look like? getting word of mouth, putting your social media before and afters is a lot of, a lot of different things you can do, but you have to be committed. And if you're watching Netflix, if you're going to brunch, if you're sitting in bed, jerking off all fucking day, you're not going to do it. People do that. It's not going to get, no, they do. I'm telling you. And because you're not motivated or you don't know where to go next. You're like, I might just sit here and just like jerk off all day or watch baby, Netflix all day. Baby, you, you sound like me right now. Cause I, be, I was thinking about how you've been jerking off all day lately. That's bullshit lie. <laughs> you caught me jerking off? I did. When? In the bathroom, I just like kind of just left you alone. Yeah, yeah. Man. It was the other day, but it's cool. Right. I was on my period, and he was like, "Just yeah, man." He was going here, and he stayed away I from was. the mirror. You were like away from the mirror, like turned around. No, that couldn't have been me. Should that was, was somebody you. else in the bathroom. She had to because I was stand up and jerk. I jerk over the toilet. Right, you were over there, away from the mirror. Maybe the Why toilet is away from the mirror. Of course, but you act like I was standing up. I wasn't fucking I, standing up. I never said standing up. Play it back. So I said you were facing off? away from the mirror. Like, you didn't want to look that way. Yeah, I, I, I can't look at the mirror no more. But I was, I would have joined you, but I was on my period. Oh, no, I get it. It's I mean, okay. Though. That's what I was doing. I don't just do it. It was hot. I'm going to walk with you more often. <laughs> <laughs> look so stupid. Now I'm not going to do it for a fucking month. <laughs> we have one more letter. And this one says, um, this one is a relationship one. I've been with my man for three years, living together for two. I ain't shit. We haven't even been together for three years yet. <laughs> <laughs> we have a relatively happy, healthy relationship emotionally. He's Good. super in love with me, and it shows. Mm -hmm. I love him and find him super attractive. Okay. For the first year or so, sex was good and exciting. Okay. After the first year, things went downhill pretty quickly. Okay. He completely stopped kissing me outside of sex, and also before, during, or after sex. Like, we will go days without kissing, even if we have sex a few times. I've encouraged him for around a year to kiss me more, but it does not happen. Oftentimes, does he does really odd, jokey things during sex, like ravaging on my breasts and making odd sucking noises and making odd faces as if he was trying to joke around. When I giggle and I try to push him off to stop him from doing this, he insists he isn't joking and that he was being serious. He does the same noises and faces when he's going down on me, and it makes me really uncomfortable. What he be doing like... <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's on drugs. He usually will in initiate sex by pulling his dick out <laughs> or humping me. <laughs> 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 Hilarious. But no kissing, feeling anything accompanied with the humping. While we're in bed, and these things are really a turn off for me. Hilarious. It's funny because we've had this conversation, so we have plenty of advice to give you. Hilarious. <laughs> The hump is going to get you somewhere. <laughs> you don't hump, you don't get nothing. Fuck I get that. you cussed out. I usually try to initiate sex and encourage a slow makeout session to get things going Fuck and then bring here. his hands on my body, but he often seems frustrated and angry when I show him where to put his hands and ends up just stopping. Yes. <laughs> well, fuck, you only going to do it when he's arguing. It's the only time you want to initiate. <laughs> you sure? The fuck out of here. I love fuck angry sex. You. It feels like he does not get the point. I've tried to buy different types of lingerie to make things more exciting. And he actually laughed a bit when he saw me in a new piece. And <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. This is terrible. I like this um, and I never had the confidence to do that again. I brought it up <laughs> to my partner about six months ago and I gave him direction of what would help me be more excited about sex. And he agreed to incorporate more kissing, making All out right, foreplay. But literally nothing has changed. <laughs> it has gotten to the point that I actually avoid sex, although I still have sexual yeah. urges and feel like I need to take care of them by myself when he's not here. That when happens. we're in bed and he tries to initiate, I find myself really uncomfortable wanting to be out of the situation or just get it over with. I fantasize about him and having great sex, but no matter what I attempt in the bedroom or no matter what I verbally express, my desires, it does not seem to click. I do acknowledge that I could do a better job in giving him direction on sex, but that is kind of why I'm writing this today. How do I talk to my partner about this again in a way that I will not hurt his feelings? How do I tell him that the things that he's doing are turning me off? And how do I give him direction that he will actually be able to follow? 
Listen, <laughs> there is so much going on man, here. And always remember, if you ever have to ask your girls, why don't he do this? The answer is he don't want to. So he doesn't want to kiss her? He don't want to kiss her. If he wanted to kiss her, he would have been kissing all day. But he kissed her all the first year. Then now something turned them off. He don't want to kiss her ass no more. That's awful. Kissing is such an intimate thing. Now, I'm wondering if she's really communicating with things. Because let me tell you, we've had this issue before. We did? We have this issue before. Not the kissing part. Oh. I can't get off you. But with the sex part, he'd be ready to just hump and go in. And that's just not, especially after the baby. Especially after the baby. How many times we had, it was an argument. I literally had to stop him and be like, yo, you got to stop doing this shit. I'm like one of, what's it called? The lawnmower? You have to like pull and pull and pull. You got to get me ready. You cannot just Yo, go straight for the kill. it's 2021, bro. It's push start out this motherfucker. And there is no push start when it comes to women. Dudes really do think it's just like, Sometimes we need some push start nights. No, and I need you to ring, ring. She's still <laughs> out here on some moped shit. They got fucking push starts out this motherfucker. No, I'm, I'm the handheld lawnmower that needs to keep going. So... That is women, though. Me that is either. men are right here. They look at you. They get turned on. Dick is hard, and they're ready to go. And it's like, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. You have to really warm this engine I, up. Yo, at two o'clock in the morning, I'm warm hunching. the engine up. Yo, I gotta be up at four. That's your problem. You shouldn't start at two. <laughs> I then you chose not to sleep. That's a choice you made. Or you can go to the bathroom and sit on the toilet and jerk off. <laughs> Watch porn on the talk. It's like <laughs> porn or watch TD Jakes. It's like I feel so pissed off that I just I be like Proverbs, TD Jakes, and porn. <laughs> it's like every time I pick porn, ah, no. So it. basically, I think maybe have a real sit down with him. You can really have to sit down, not just kind of like oh, I just like I don't this. Want I to. like that. We telling you right Why? now. Why you don't want to? If he wanted to, he would do it. Okay, so what should you tell him? I should tell her that his sex chemistry with y'all are, is gone. Um, he just, he's over it. Once, <gasps> the, once the kissing and stuff start going, it's like, you know, eh, no. no kiss. Come on. If I stop kissing you, if you come to me and try to, if, if I, you try to kiss me and I go like this. I would cry. I then. So you want, how many times you want that to happen? Can you handle that? I could handle that. All right. For then. a whole year. I, so Miss Ma'am, got to go. You gotta go. She gotta. She don't do that to yourself. Why would you do yeah. that to yourself? I feel like if it was something else, kissing. I was gonna tell you maybe like you should go to the dentist. But then he. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> but then she said he does it when he goes down on you too, and I'm like, do you need to go to the gynecologist? Like I'm not sure. Maybe ask him those questions. Is there something that's turning him off? Maybe he can be like honest with you about it. Um, A smelly well, he will make <laughs> things change. But he's still having sex with her. He just. Yeah, from the back. Wouldn't the, from the back be the worst? That woof will come up? Nah, if their legs open, it's more of a fucking turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, you what you mean mother, a turkey? Yeah, motherfucker, how a turkey look? <laughs> fucking legs wide open. That's so the smell moment. don't smell. come? When you turn the turkey on the ass, you turn the turkey on the ass, you don't really smell it. You turn that motherfucker, that pussy, that ah, right up in there, all the guts and everything. Ah. Disgusting. Well, homegirl, maybe either go to the gynecologist, have that serious conversation with him, or just kind of let him know. Maybe he's getting it somewhere Vagisil. else. What if he's getting it somewhere else? Uh, no? Man, yeah, it might be. I mean, that's a lot after of things. a year, after a year, he already off the pussy and off the kissing and shit like that, because it all is really connected at the end of the day. You want to connect with yeah. your mate. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I don't even want to get some. I'm like, damn, I ain't getting nothing in two days. What the fuck you mean I ain't getting nothing in two days? What the fuck you doing? <laughs> like the vibrator better to be, the fucking the porn better to be, or what the fuck your fingers? Um, sometimes I, sometimes I'm not gonna lie, as a woman, I just rather use the vibrator. I get it, but I'm not don't make me intimidated by the fucking vi- vibrator. You're right. Don't You're make right. me intimidated by nothing. I don't care if it's your fingers, like I just want to jerk off today. Like, yo, hold on, how you in here jerking off with them right here? How would you feel? I've done it. What do you mean? When I use the vibrator next thing, I'm just like, I, just use I the know. That's what I said. So how would you feel if I'm over there just jerking off you right there? You're like, damn, you ain't offer me nothing. Like you don't want to do nothing with me. It's like, it's kind of wild. You're right. From okay, but from a girl's perspective, for us, it's just like messy when you guys are involved. If you're by yourself, you still gonna be messy. So there's no. She's just gonna go over your hand all over the place. 
What are you talking about? Oh my god, we're supposed to go into past the word after this, so we have to talk about something else. But we cannot go into past the word with this being the last thing. Because you are unbelievable. You are unbelievable. Are you high? No, but this wine is amazing. I know something. <laughs> You try to bait me into fucking saying I want to have a fucking sister wife. <laughs> Fucker. We're definitely not having a sister wife. But it's great idea on paper. Yeah, on paper. Where on the paper, at? paper. I don't know where the paper's at, but it ain't here. <laughs> Anyways, moving right along. If you have any questions or any advice that you want from us, hit us up at whatever she says podcast yes. at gmail.com or you can DM either one of us. I'll try to get a screenshot. DMs are the worst possible way. For, I might get it. Or I might not. The email yes. is the best way to get to me. So we're going to go over into our favorite segment. which Baby, is, can I say what? something? You got it. When we pass the word. You going to press the button? Yes. Okay. And I want to say that bachelorette thing you're talking about. <sighs> just telling you. Quiet. I'm just telling you. I just want, I want God to bless it. That's what I'm saying. We're going, we're going to bring it back. You know what I'm saying? That bachelorette thing you guys talking about we, I, 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 would, I wouldn't mind doing a joint bachelor yeah, you better bachelor. figure something out it ain't gonna be joint but well, you better figure <laughs> something better be figured out I'm just trying to tell I you I got you we already talked about it you're gonna send a female security with us you can send Jada with us send Jada with us Jada gonna get bribed by titties <laughs> listen you don't trust her wax <laughs> <laughs> but listen, nah, I'm out. I definitely got. I'm gonna be. On we that. gonna be on the phone together the whole time, anyway. I get it. Yeah, good job. Like, yeah, baby. <gasps> yeah. Lord Jesus, are you serious? That's what's going through your fucking mind. Are you cursing right before past the word? Are you jerking off in the air before past the word? <laughs> I'm just asking God for you prayer. You were just air jerking. I'm asking God for prayer. Please okay. pray for me, Lord. We'll pray for it. That's going to be hard for me. Premarital counseling. It, we're coming. And, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll compromise on something where it's, I'll, I for sure will we'll compromise something where you're you know calm about it and I'll we'll, we'll figure something out. I'm not. I would never do anything at the end of the day that would make you feel uncomfortable. So we'll A bachelorette out. party in another island. We're going into past the word. I need prayer. In Jesus name. I like this too. Just kind of there. You got it. <laughs> All right, so today we have Proverbs. Ah, I love Proverbs. I brought, your, I brought you your Proverbs. Proverbs 10, 17, and it says, Whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. Mm. So whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. It's Proverbs 10, 17. Mm. I, don't I say that all the time? I'm like, every time you sit there and, and don't want to accept when you do wrong, you see what I'm saying? It's like, people want to sit there and be like, oh, I'm, I'm so disciplined. There's like certain things that I do with my discipline. Like, I don't smoke weed on Sundays. There's certain things that I don't do with discipline. I'm looking for something else to come in. Right. You know what I'm saying? So people are so, they, they never want to be so disciplined. It's like, like what's the problem? Who are you depending on? If you did, I'm so disciplined because I'm looking at God. I would, if I, I wouldn't be so disciplined if I had told another person like, yo, Carla, I'm not going to smoke weed on Sunday. Some, some Super Bowls or the Cowboys is playing. I don't smoke weed on that I'm Sunday. I'm sure 420 has fell on a Sunday. Do you see what I'm saying? So just me doing it by God, God helped my discipline. And I thank God to give me, help me be a, a God fearing man to help me with my discipline. You got to do it with God. I mean, for with experience with me, I have to do it with God. So I'm giving God all the credit for so that. Showing, so for discipline, discipline is bringing you life. Yet whoever needs correction or ignores correction. I think the big word here is ignoring correction. When yes. you're sometimes stubborn. Last night we were talking about stubbornness yes. and not listening when yes. you are in the, when you're living, right. And you're like, I don't hear God telling me what to do. And I was just telling you this. I don't hear him. I, I, it, it, it's, there's too much. It, what's going on? I don't, I, he's not telling me shit. And hey, then you realize, you sorry, God, God knows my heart. God knows my heart. So he, I don't hear anything. I'm like, God, you're not talking to me. But really, I'm keeping myself so busy, and there's so much noise around that it's me not hearing him because I'm keeping things, like, yeah. too much noise going around, and I need time to just stop and listen so I can be corrected or led in the right path. So I think I'm, I might be there right now where I don't know, for me personally, as, as Carla, as a woman, as a businesswoman, where I'm headed next, next, I'm kind of moving that direction, but I feel like I have to stop for a second and focus on me and on him and listen to what he has to tell me. Because right now I'm 
so involved as your your woman and as a mom and in the household that I'm not hearing you where my direction is going. Of yourself. And I told you, sometimes you got to deny yourself. Sometimes you got to die daily. I die daily for God. And I always tell you, we got, we got two ears and one mouth. If God wanted us to talk more, he would sit there and give us two mouths, one eye, and one ear. He gave us two ears and one mouth and two eyes, more than a mouth, two, two nostrils. He could have given us one big thing and one hole in our nose, but he gave us two of them because he wanted us to smell more. He wanted us to be more observant. He wanted us to look more before we talk. He wants to hear more before we talk. And people always sit there and try to sh- so stop, sit there and try to take up for yourself. Sometimes you've got to listen and see where it's going at. Because a lot of times when I actually listen, I'd be like, you know, I, I kind of got something out of that. Because I let them listen and I ain't sit there and ignore, like, my faults. Yeah. And that's what people do. But we're do. humans. We're all humans. And we have to accept and kind of be like, well, you know what? For right now, I haven't been, you know, quiet enough to listen. Or I have been on my own journey and not taking his journey. So for right now, for me, I'm quieting down. I'm trying to not ignore maybe some things that he might be correcting that I am ignoring only way to grow and be more disciplined. I talked about it on Instagram yesterday. I yes. said, you know, I need to be a lot more disciplined with my eating. I need to be a lot, be yes. more, a lot more disciplined with my working out. Like I'm not as disciplined as I know that I can be because I've done it before. So when I feel slouchy and I feel like, uh, just not as pretty or sexy, or I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm like, ah, that's not what I want to look like. It's because I'm not disciplined. And what comes out, out of discipline? Glory. I look so blessing. good. Blessing. You see what I'm saying? And that, and what and what comes out of ignoring, you know what I'm saying, the things that we, people be ignoring. We, like it says, you, but the thing important here in this proverb is that you lead others astray. Yes. And it's because you are ignoring correction. You're moving. There are people that are always following you. And you have to make sure for both of us, we are definitely leaders. Yes. And we lead a lot of people. And I have to be very careful in what I say on social media, what I say in front of my daughter, yes. what how I move, because a lot of people are watching me in the way that I move and I can lead you to a really, really That's why awful I don't play place. around with them at all. You see how I talk to my son and everything. I'm not going to sit there and ever tell you the wrong thing. Yeah. Ever. I don't care. You're like, oh, he's too young for it. No, I'm not going to teach him the wrong thing at all. Right and right and wrong is wrong. Yeah. No, I think the only thing that sometimes I say is like, let's put things into perspective for an eight year old at times. But you you did. I, I'm not even going to lie. This month when um, King was here, I was, I've ne- it was my first time, you know, seeing you mm-hmm. as a father with him. I've seen you, you know, help me with Ayana, but that is a stepdaughter and it's mm-hmm. a girl. And with Psalm, with yeah. Gugu Gaga. Yeah. But it was my first time seeing you with him. And Although we, I can improve in my parenting with Ayana, and we have mm-hmm. our traumas of how we were raised. I think you, re, I saw you really trying with him, and mm-hmm. you know, putting efforts you in. To. You know, kids you really work our in. nerves, and they gotta yes. get ass whooping at some time. But I saw you, Maybe and I loved. God knows what ass means. He knows mm-hmm. my heart. Jesus. Oh my God! But anyway, against Proverbs ten seventeen. Whoever heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. So just be aware of the discipline that you're doing. And if you feel like you're not listening and you are ignoring correction, you might be leading others astray, whether it be your partner, because sometimes we talk about submission. Uh And as a man, if he has no discipline, I cannot let him lead me. No way. And there's, yes, we should submit to our partners. We should submit to our husbands. Uh But at the end of the day, I am not submitting to a man that's leading me to a dry, you know, pit. And I tell my family and my my nieces, my sisters, like, don't submit to no clown. Don't don't submit to some guy that you already see that you're taking care of. You see his future. He'll have a bright future. You don't see his drive. You don't see... You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, y'all women, y'all pick y'all men at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? And it's, and it's different. When you tell me certain things, you're leading me. But he also submits to me. Like when I was, I was, I was. I don't want to go to I Ikea. Feel, well, Ikea is one thing. But I was feeling some type of way the other day when I looked in the garage and I'm like, man, he, we have all these nice things and you're not taking care of them. And it really hurt me to be like, you're not taking care of your shit. And when I came back hey, out there, you had cleaned up. God knows me. Me and JC got this. Worry about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, I looked in the garage and you had cleaned up and that really made me feel good. And I know you probably didn't want to clean it up. That's not true. I was mean to do it, but I'm always literally on a rush. Like I run in there four o'clock in the morning. A, but a tiny Chew. bit of a tiny bit of discipline can keep that room, you know, no, a little a bit cleaner. Percent. A thousand percent. And that's what I'm saying. Right on the other side of discipline, right on the other side of stubbornness, right on the other side of humiliation, right on the other side of sacrifice is your, all your blessings. And everybody always don't understand that. Everybody to feel about, oh, I got humiliated. Oh, I got a blessing on, on the other side of that. 
Yeah. Right before the darkest th- the time of the night is right before daylight. You see what I'm saying? So it's going to come. You just got to really, really, really hold on and keep on knocking. That's one, the part that um, JJ said this uh, this weekend when we listened yes. to him. He was like, just keep on knocking. You're one knock away. I always yeah. tell people, yo, you one prayer away. Don't if give you up. just said, Jesus, that one more time. The time is to give up. There's a time really to keep on going forward. What you was, see what I'm saying? What was the name of that message? It was what happens when he doesn't do it for you. Yes. So basically you've seen everyone else get their miracles and their prayers answered. And you're like, what's going on with me? But what he's saying is keep going, keep going. Don't stop. Yeah. Excuse me. Don't stop praying. Don't stop asking. And don't stop walking the right path. Cause you, I was watching, um, we're going to have someone come on the show. That's been trying to manifest her love life. And she's about to turn 40. She'll probably be here okay. next week. So next week we'll be talking to a woman that's really trying to, work on her love life and trying to figure out why hasn't this come apart, uh, come upon her because she was there when I was manifesting my love life. And she Mm -hmm. has seen like from the very beginning or right before you and I got together to where I am now. And basically you might be sitting here and be like, I'm being a good woman. I'm not out here smashing everybody. I'm focusing on myself and this right man still not coming. But if you give up right before you're like, you know what? I've been asking for this, praying for this, manifesting this, and this man's still not coming around. It's not happening. F it. I'm just going to go and, Suck every dick I can. And then you don't know if that man. We had to cut this pastor word up. (laughs) Like grab the pastor word for the words of the pastors and stuff like that. And then we go and do the Uh, side of Carla. Yeah. The the Carla side is a little bit more ratchet. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's go ahead and cut that up a little bit. It's okay. We're going to get it. But the point is that you don't know that man could have been almost there. And because you didn't keep going on the right path because you saw everybody else getting married and you were the maid of honor three Uh times and you still didn't find the man at the wedding. the rose though. She got to catch the rose. Maybe she caught it three times and still the man's not there. (laughs) Keep going. Keep going. Maybe get your feet done. (laughs) Maybe your soulmate, maybe the soulmate that God has for you is going through a divorce and you have to wait until that's finalized. You know, what if that's what's going on? What if that, yeah. what if the, the, your soulmate is going through a residency and being, you know, what if adult, you ain't ready yet? What if you aren't ready yet? And yeah. he can't give that to you just yet. But anyways, we'll, we'll be talking about that, uh, probably next week. And thank you for that. Proverbs ten seventeen, my love. Wow. Now we get to wrap up the show. We gotta get out of here. Can I press another button? Um, there's no other buttons for you to push. Mm. No. But wrapping this up, thank you guys so much for showing up. Make sure to go to Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to your podcast. Leave a rating and review. We will be able to read it here on the show. Invite other folks to listen to the show. Who's Wax Gummies? Yes. Where to go get that, babe? Who's Wax Gummies? Who's Wax Rush Charger? Go get your Rush Charger on RushCharge.com. Um, I got one right here. I'm actually about to plug my phone up right now. So you guys remember back in the day we would have the buck the boxes and you had to find a cable in order to be able to charge uh, your phone. With this one, you don't need any more cables. You can charge your electronic nobody devices. Nobody do wires no more. So, if you're still doing wires out here in 2021, you'll never be able to f- have, be with the flying cars. And you don't even need a wire to charge it up. So, again, this is really dope. Retcharge.com, who's wax.net to get those yes. gummies. Use the code WSS for money off. And yes. if you want to make to start a podcast of any type, whether it's entrepreneurship, I got you. Go to CarlaRamirez.com, schedule a clarity call, and I'll let you know if podcasting is even for you before you invest all this money yeah. into starting a She'll podcast. She'll tell you suck. I will. I hold nothing back. And if I don't think podcasting is for you, I will tell you, I'm not going to take your money just to take your money. I really yeah, won't. Yeah, because your voice, you sound like... <laughs> and uh, I, no, and I said, there are, some, uh, there are some really, really popular podcasts out there with monotone yeah. voices. You Sometimes people listen to like, oh, I'd this is... i talk like that, though. Yeah, right. Try. Right. I would love to hear you at least try be monotone. You would never be able to. You're too yeah. animated. Yeah. It's okay for me to talk like this. This is our cue. No. Let's get the fuck up out of here. Let's get out of here. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. We'll see ya. Peace. Uh, seriously? What? This is what we're going to do? You told me to do it. Okay. What you talking about now? Yeah.